usually about once or twice a week uh, on my YouTube channel, I get somebody who clump, comes through kind of like a like a shooting star, a meteor that comes through the channel and loves to light a fire in regards to PHT, PHP because I talk about PHP a lot. I obviously have a PHP course and there's there's usually someone who likes to come through and just kind of flame the comments with how PHP sucks and it's terrible and it's dead and nobody's writing PHP code. I had, I think the specific comment was something along as kind of the snarky LOL PHP really, that's a dead language, etc. Even the people who write articles and, and ask questions, is PHP dead? Oftentimes when you actually read it, they're not actually asking the question. The, it's a lead in to catch new developers who are genuinely wondering that question and wondering if PHP is something that they should invest in. It's there to catch them and then tell them why PHP is terrible and they shouldn't learn it and they should learn their language of choice. So I'm going to provide the counter view and hopefully catch a few developers in that same trap, so to speak, and give them the other side of the argument. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the arguments, first talk about the arguments people make against PHP. And it really kind of falls into two categories. One is a technical kind of category where they talk about kind of the nuance of the language and the way it works and so forth. And then the other one is a popularity kind of uh, argument that they make that PHP is losing its popularity and so forth. And so that just means more people, you know, there's more developers aren't using PHP, et cetera, and so you shouldn't use it either. So I want to address both of these. I'm going to talk about the popularity one first because to me this is the craziest one. So what I see so often, there's this, I would say the Ackerman is Tyobe. Tyobe, it's T-I-O-B-E, the importance of being earnest is what it stands for. And there's this index that they've created, and it's designed to measure the popularity of programming languages. And so if you look at this index and what people often do when talking about how PHP is losing popularity, they point to this index and show how, you know, if you look at it, it looks like PHP is losing its popularity. And <clears throat> this index, and this will be important as we get into it, is based on the number of search en engine results for queries containing the name of the language. So what they basically do is they look at search engines, they look for queries containing the the language, so PHP in this case, and then they look to see how many web pages, how many search engine results come up for those searches. And then they base the popularity, the more, more search engine results for a particular language, then presumably the more popular it is. Now, there's some issues with this way of looking at popularity. In fact, someone, people who aren't PHP proponents have looked at this index and said that there's problems with it. So much so that an alternative index was created uh, with the acronym PYPL. And their critique of this TIOB index or TIOBE index is that it counts the number of web pages that exist, but it doesn't actually count how many people are looking at those web pages. So a particular language could have 10 million web pages out there that come up in search results for it, but does that mean that people are actually looking at those web pages? They're actually going to those web pages and looking at them? That would be maybe an important thing to look at when considering how popular a programming language is. And so PYPL, this index, came up with a, a new way of looking at it because what they saw is while certain languages would rank high in this TIOBE index and have tons of web pages out there, when they looked at Google Trends data for those languages, they would note that there was a big difference, that the trends were, were way down compared to the number of search results. And so they decided to make their own index and they use Google Trends as a part of it. And what this does is shows how many people are actually going and viewing those web pages. 
and, and doesn't just count the number of, of web pages that actually exist out there. Now, to my mind, and a lot of people's, this seems like a much better indicator of popularity. The reason I point this out is because people love to point to this TIOB index as the end-all be-all in terms of language popularity. You'll see it time and time again. Just doing the research for this episode, time and time again, this index is posted. But there's a fundamental problem with how it works. It's, it's a classic case of confirmation bias. You see an index that fits your preconceived notion, so you use that and say that's the only one that matters. And it becomes interesting when you look at the difference between the two, specifically related to PHP. So in the TIOBE index, PHP is ranked number six. And this is one of the things that people point to. Oh, it's ranked number six. It's it's kind of on the decline. They'll show this chart where it shows like it it, it shows this huge declines in, in PHP and so forth. And they'll say it's a dying language. But if you look at the PYPL index, PHP is actually number three. And it's number three behind Java and Python. All these other languages that people like to point to that they say are killing PHP are either way down on the list or not on the list at all. So in terms of actual popularity, what seems like a better indicator, PHP is number three instead of number six. And it's behind two other languages that are you know, fairly well-established languages. They're, they're not the new upstarts that everybody claims is taking over PHP. But here's what really kind of turns this on its head, which makes the, this whole kind of popularity thing crazy to me. And I, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to go through it again for those who've never heard. What really is interesting is that even though PHP is number three in this index, in terms, and understand, this isn't how many sites are using PHP. This is the number of web pages that that have the phrase that show up in search results for the phrase PHP and in in terms of the PYPL uh index it's PHP tutorial and they have a whole explanation of why so this is web pages that are related to PHP tutorials or java tutorials etc it's not how many sites it's installed on because when you look at how many sites it's installed on it's not even close now, according to w3techs.com, PHP is used by 82% of websites whose server-side language we know. 82%. Now, a lot of people will look at that and say, well, yeah, but that's, you know, that's this one site, that's one number, who knows how close that is, etc. Okay. Google was actually forced to admit itself that according to what it saw, and again, this is the index, dang near everything, that their number was about 75%. They thought that PHP powered about 75% of all websites. Now, the reason that they were forced to admit this is because they were forced to add PHP support to their app engine, which is kind of their, their back-end cloud service. And it was they had to add it because... It was the most requested feature. And once they added it, it quickly became one of the most popular languages in their Google Cloud offerings. They had tons and tons of people who were wanting them to add it. And so they said in the release, they said, well, we figure about 75% of websites use PHP. So when you get into number of websites actually using PHP in terms of popularity, it's not even close. PHP is far in a way more popular. So yes, the indexes are important. You can look at all the indexes, but look at all of the numbers, not just how many tutorials have come out regarding PHP, how many sites actually use it. Beyond that, if you look at some of the major applications that are out there, so for example, the the content management system type area. You have Drupal and WordPress and others that are all major projects built on PHP. And WordPress itself powers 25% of all websites 
according to W3 Techs, and is likely to grow because they found that it's powering as much as 29% of new sites that they're tracking. And they, they've seen that usually the way new sites go is the way the category goes overall. So they're projecting that that's going to grow. And again, it's based off of PHP. So all that to say the popularity argument, that's my case against the PHP isn't very popular or losing popularity argument. There might not be as many tutorials coming out now as there was in 2004, but in terms of sites using it, it's been consistent, consistently growing in popularity. You know, one of the big mistakes that I see a lot of developers make is they make learning how to code much harder than it has to be. For example, I see a lot of developers who think the list of skills that they need to learn to master PHP is pages and pages and pages long. It's not. Now, I've said this before, and I will definitely say it again, but there's a foundational set of skills that you need to learn in order to be functional as a PHP developer, meaning that you can execute on projects and get paid. This is the fallacy that is so prevalent in the PHP developer community that there's this ideal set of skills that you have to learn and that you have to be the absolute greatest developer in the history of mankind in order to be able to get paid to code. You don't. You simply need to be able to execute on projects. I talk about end results all the time. You need to be able to deliver end results to clients because that's ultimately what they want. But when you focus on these found foundational skills, and learning only those first, the things that will allow you to execute on projects, what you realize is that you can start getting paid to code much faster than you probably ever thought because you haven't set this idealistic, unattainable bar for yourself to reach before you allow yourself to take paid work. You can start now when you can execute on a deliverable. When you can complete a, a single project, when you can create a contact form or a business website, when you can execute on that, you can start. And you can start then building the life that you wanted that you got into this all for the, in the first place, instead of continuing to slave away at some job making somebody else rich. Anyway, you can learn these skills in my free course. The Beginner's Guide to PHP, which you can enroll in at johnmorrisonline.com slash learn PHP. And it's going to teach you these foundational skills so you can get started right now. Again, it's a completely free course that you can take at johnmorrisonline.com slash learn PHP. Don't wait on this. Head over there right now and get started building that life.